Hi and welcome to Bearings. Um, just before we start, uh, just a reminder there is a notes chapter available for this video. Just check the description below for a download link and you can work along with me as we go through the video. So we're going to begin this video with the compass um, and the reason we're doing that is that bearings are all to do with navigation and navigation is done uh, using a compass and all of the different directions are based around north and so from north to east if we wanted to turn from north to east we would turn 90 degrees it would be a right angle and therefore east can be classed as 90 degrees. If I wanted to get from north to south, well that would be turning half a turn and so I would be going 180 degrees to get from north to south. And carrying on, I'm going to go from north to south but I'm going to continue in this clockwise direction all the way around to west. Well if that was 90, 180, it's another 90 degrees to get to west. I'm at 270 degrees. Now if I was at north and I wanted to get all the way back round to north, well I could have turned 360 degrees. My other option though would be that actually I turn 0 degrees, I haven't turned at all, I stay pointing north. But then the other directions as well, those halfway points, northeast, well northeast that would be 45 degrees as it's halfway between 0 and 90 from southeast. Well, southeast will be 90 plus another 45, it'll be 135 degrees. Southwest, well, that will be 180 plus another 45, so 225 degrees. And then northwest, well, that will be 270 plus 45, we'll be at 315 degrees. Each of those angles or each of those directions can be measured as an angle from north. But importantly, once again, they were always measured clockwise. And that is something we're going to come to in terms of um, bearings. Because the rules for bearings state that they are always measured from due north, they are always measured clockwise, and they always have three digits. And therefore, if we have a look at what we've actually written here, most of these angles do have three digits. But 90 degrees, that has only got two digits currently. So how could I make that a three digit number, but it's still mean the same? Well, I would place a zero at the front, zero, nine, zero. 45 degrees, exactly the same. I'd put a zero at the front. And for zero degrees, I would actually call that zero, zero, zero degrees. And so that gives us three digits. Why would we use three digits? Well, it actually comes down to um, communication. If I was on the radio trying to tell someone of my location, I would be talking about where I started and how far I've traveled and on what bearing. Now, if I was on the radio and I told someone that I was at two, uh, two three degrees, well, the person on the other end would want to know, uh, want me to repeat that because they'd only heard two, uh, two digits. And the reason for that I've said two, three. Well, that would be if they uh, took that as exactly correct, as 23 degrees, they would be traveling at roughly this angle. But that that overtook on the radio, that might have been saying one, two, three. One, two, three would be more like here. It could have said two, two, three would be more like here. And it could have been three, two, three. That would have been more like here. In terms of a vast ocean, the difference between traveling on this bearing and this bearing and this bearing and this bearing could be a very large distance indeed. Okay, so we've been asked to find the three figure bearing from point A to point B. Now in order to do this, we've got a few steps to follow. The first step, is that we should join together the two points with a straight line. So I've joined A to B with a straight line. Step two would be to draw in a line due north from the first point. Um, now, the first point, if we go back to what the question said, it said from point A. The word from is very important. Whichever point it is from, that is where the north line needs to be. 
Now, in exam questions, these north lines are generally already drawn in for you um, to make sure that we're all measuring from the same, uh, the same uh, north line. Next, we'd be asked to actually measure that angle and we must measure it clockwise from due north. And so I've set up my protractor here so that the protractor is lined up with the north line and then I'm going to measure clockwise until I reach the line for B. Now, in this case, I need to be sure as to which numbers I am using. In this case, zero is on the outside of the numbers and therefore it's the outside numbers I am using. If I measure that angle, it is 70 degrees. And that is the first thing. But what does a bearing need to be? Well, the bearing must use three figures. So where we had 70 degrees, our bearing should be zero, seven, zero degrees. And so we have measured the bearing from north of a, uh, B from A. Now, if we do that again for the three figure bearing from point B to point A, again, there's that word from, it's from point B. And so as we go through this time, we're going to do the same steps. We're going to join together A and B. But this time, our north line is going to be from B. So you'll notice now that the diagram looks slightly different because what we're going to do is we're going to measure the angle. But again, we are measuring the angle clockwise from north. And so we're actually going around the outside here. What we are doing is we are measuring a reflex angle. And so to measure a reflex angle, you have a couple of options. The first option is that you actually measure the angle that you don't want. And so the angle that we don't want here would be uh, using the outside numbers. We'd be here at 110 degrees. And therefore the reflex angle would be 360, take away 110, 250 degrees. The other option that we have is that we actually extend this line a little bit further. And so we make a full length line. And the reason for that is we can say for certain that this piece is 180 degrees. And so then what we can actually do is just measure the remainder of that angle, which in this case is another 70 degrees. And we can add those two together in order to form the reflex angle. And so 180 plus 70, well, that comes to 250 degrees as well. Both methods form the same answer of 250 degrees. Now, a bearing should be three digits. In this case, it already is three digits. It was 250 degrees. And so we don't need to add any zeros in this case. So next, we're actually going to draw ourselves a diagram following some bearings. Um, we are told that a boat travels four kilometers on a bearing of 070 degrees from point A. Draw its route on the diagram. Now, the first thing that is actually really important here is the fact that we have a scale. It's a scale of one kilometer to two centimeters. So this four kilometers, if we want to find out what that is in centimeters, well, this piece has multiplied by four and therefore this piece is going to multiply by four as well. And so we should be drawing a line which is eight centimeters long. We are drawing a bearing. Now, if we need to draw a bearing, all bearings are measured from due north. So in this case, the first thing we actually need to do is to draw in our, uh, our north line going from A. So we need to draw a line which is going straight up. And this is our north line. We need to measure a bearing 0, 7, 0. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab my protractor. I'm going to get the center of it right in the uh, center of point A. And I'm going to rotate my protractor so that it is in line with the north line. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure an angle of 70 degrees. Now I need to be careful which numbers I use. Zero is on the outside, and so I'm going to use the outside numbers. 
and 70 degrees is here. So I just mark it with a little point and I take my protractor away. This is where I bring in my uh, ruler because now I need to draw a line which goes through this point that I've just marked. But I also want it to be eight centimeters long. And so all I'm going to do is I'm going to start my line at eight and draw it through to the central point. I have now shown the journey of this boat as I have drawn the bearing at 070 degrees and it's four kilometers, which we've represented as eight centimeters. Now you might want to add just a little bit of information there. You might add on that that's four kilometers. You might add that that is 70 degrees, just to show exactly how you've got to your answer. Next, we are told the treasure is buried on a bearing of 070 degrees from point A. It is also on a bearing of 120 degrees from point B. Mark the location of the treasure with an X. Well, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to need to draw some bearings. Um, so we're going to take our protractor. We're going to line it up with our north line. And I'm going to start with from point A. We were told from point A that we were working at a bearing of 070 degrees. So again, I'm on the outside numbers around to 70 degrees and marking that point with a dot. If I just take the protractor away, I then just want to draw a straight line going through this point. We haven't been given any distances this time. So all I'm going to do here is actually draw the line as far as I possibly can. I'm then going to look at point B. From point B, we were told it was a, um, a bearing of 120 degrees. And so again, I'm on the outside numbers and I'm going to go around to 120 and I'm going to mark that with a little point. And there we go. And again, I'm going to take my protractor away and from B, I'm going to draw a line straight through that point and continue it as far as I can. Now, what have we created? Well, the main thing is we have created an intersection, a point where those two bearings both meet. If both bearings meet at a single point, then that must be the point X. And therefore, if they intersect, that is where the treasure is buried. Now, the last thing we're going to look at um, are back-to-back -back bearings. Um, so we have two points, um, both, uh, both labelled A and B, and then we have um, the north lines drawn from each of them. Now, in this case, what is really important here is that both of these lines are pointing north. If they are both pointing north, then what we can actually say about them is that they are parallel to each other. So as these are parallel lines, we may be able to use some of the features of parallel lines that we have seen before. And one of those features is where we make an F shape, where we have corresponding angles. And the rule for corresponding angles is that corresponding angles are equal. Now, in this question, we are told, uh, asked to find the bearing from A to B. So from A to B means starting at A going to B. Well, it's already been given to us as 50 degrees. Is that a bearing? Well, not quite because it hasn't got three digits. So we need 50 degrees in there. But then we're asked to find the bearing from B to A. So that would be us starting at B and finding the bearing around to A. This is a reflex angle. It is more than 180 degrees. And this diagram generally will not have been drawn accurately either. So we won't be able to measure. But what we can say is we have this corresponding angle. And therefore this angle here must be 50 degrees. What is this angle here? Well, it is a straight line. Therefore that piece must be 180. And so if I want to find the bearing from B to A, I can actually just add those two values together and get an answer of 230 degrees. I don't need 
to worry about trying to measure anything. I don't need to worry um, about finding the size of the missing angle. All I want to know is use my corresponding angles to show the two parts are equal. And so we end with the exam question. This came from Edexcel's IGCSE. Um, we've been given a diagram um, and it's not drawn accurately. The diagram shows two points, S and T. The bearing of T from S is 0, 4, 3 degrees. Work out the bearing of S from T. Well, if we were going to find the bearing from T, which is what it asks for, well, we would need a north line. And we would need to find the bearing from T to S. Well, that would be suggesting a full reflex angle. But this one, this is the case of exactly what we've just looked at in our last example. We can create an extension of this diagram. If we have a look, what we now have is an F shape. I have corresponding angles, which means that this must be 43 degrees. If this piece is 43 and this piece is 180, if I place them, uh, if I add them together, 180 plus 43, well, that is going to give me the total of this reflex angle. I'm going to have 223 degrees. We have found the bearing.